to get used to this. I came to the front and you all went quiet. <laughs> Are you on your, on your best behaviour? Yeah. Is, that, is that what changing the clocks has done? <laughs> Half asleep. <laughs> yeah. Can we just say, to be gracious is to pretend that nothing has happened if someone turns up in an hour's time. <laughs> okay, let's just operate those, those grace muscles. Welcome to our service of Holy Communion as we journey towards Holy Week and Easter. Today we look at the extraordinary account of the raising of Lazarus. And uh, we've had an interesting week and uh, we've got lots to give thanks for. Um, but we gave thanks for Zan's life on Thursday and uh, I was just saying to Alan you can't manufacture the celebration of someone's life and there was a richness in the colour <coughs> and the expression of her life on Thursday and uh, wonderful witness and uh, let's just open in prayer shall we Lord thank you that uh, an hour earlier we can gather in this place of shelter to worship you. Lord, thank you that we can uh, scuttle through the rain and just know what it is to come together as a body of believers. Lord, we just pray that you would guide us in our worship, that we'd have a sense of your love and your presence with us. Lord, speak to us afresh this day in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Notices wise, I think you're aware of Penny's funeral uh, a week on Monday. Um, that is in the notice sheet. Also in the notice sheet are the events of Holy Week. Um, what we are doing this year is really waiting till Wednesday when we have our first Holy Week event and we're going to have a Holy Week walk at 5.30 and then at 6.30 soup and a roll and then 7.30 at Elmstead we're going to have foot washing and then we're here for Monday Thursday we're going to have an informal Holy Communion where we remember the Last Supper and then we've got the Good Friday workshop at Elmstead on Good Friday we've got the 2 o'clock last hour at the cross at Thorrington and then 4.30 here, we've got a Good Friday uh, Messy Church Lego workshop for the kids. So uh, if you know someone who'd appreciate that, do mention that to them. Um, Easter Saturday, we've got the Easter Holy Fire at Elmstead. And then I know you're all going to be here. 6.10 in the morning on Easter Sunday, we've got the sunrise service. You're very welcome. We will light a fire say some prayers and then we're into our uh, services of Easter Day celebration which I know will be such a time of joy. Any other notices? So that's a thank you from Barbara. Um, we had a bit of a hiccup with Tony to say the least <laughs> and after an ambulance um, we think the angina and triggered by a tooth infection yeah so yeah we just had a bit bit of a moment but um barbara i know you're grateful for everybody supporting that, that in that moment shall we pray um our confession and then go into worship yeah so one of the things we do each sunday is we say sorry to god we don't pretend to be perfect we know that as we approach a holy God, we need to say sorry. So let's just bow our heads. Then we'll respond, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Let's pray. Lord, as the rain falls on the earth and gives life and growth, we also know it 
washes away. And Lord, we're just conscious that we make mistakes, we mess up, and we pray that you'd wash away our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we want to be defined by love, the desire for truth and justice. And Lord, we recognise that there are times when we should have acted and we crossed our arms. We pray, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord God, you care for creation and we've not always been good stewards of ourselves, our time, our money, our resources. We look at the state of the earth and we pray, forgive us, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The living Lord Jesus, risen from the dead, forgive you, renew you, refresh you, this day and always. Amen. So as a gathered people of God, forgiven, let's stand to worship.
you please be seated? The church's prayer for this fifth Sunday in Lent. Let's pray. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we have a marathon reading. And I just want you to engage with it. Um, it's a long old reading. But imagine you're an eyewitness in these conversations. Ready for this, Meg? <coughs> in that case, I will apologise in advance for any mistakes I make. <sighs> now, a certain man was ill. Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after hearing, sorry, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The, di the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to waken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. However, Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. 
The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping also, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you were always near, you, you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the dramatic power of this account. Just pray that by your Holy Spirit you would speak to us afresh today. Lord, that it may inform our walk of life into eternal life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Every now and again, humanity gets a glimpse of an individual so wrapped up in a cause that they're prepared to die for it. The night before Martin Luther King was shot, um, he was preparing to stand in solidarity with some bin collection people, some workers in Chicago. And he was heard to preach, I want to live a long life like any man but I've been to the mountain top and I've seen the promised land I don't know how we're going to get there but I know that one day we will get to the promised land why do I mention this I want to talk about the chain reaction that the raising of Lazarus would create Martin Luther King knew that there was risks uh, going to Chicago and the disciples in the passage before the raising of Lazarus, even doubting Thomas says, Lord, we will go with you to die. There was a cost for Jesus in the raising of Lazarus. If I... Um, if I go to a bone china shop and uh, decide to give you a demonstration of my best skipping with a skipping rope, there will be a consequence. 
there will be a chain reaction. Jesus raising Lazarus that close to Jerusalem was always going to um, have an impact. Jesus was triggering the climax of his ministry and also the opposition to his ministry. If it had happened in Galilee, different story. That was away from the political uh, capital. That was where the Romans were and the Greeks were with a, a seasoning of the Samaritans. But Bethany was on the doorstep of Jerusalem at the heightened time of the Passover when everybody would be gathered together. Over the last few weeks, we've been looking and reflecting on people encountering Jesus. And we've looked at the teacher Nicodemus coming in night time and being confused, frankly, by what Jesus says. But he starts a journey and then converts. And then we hear of the woman who was drawing water at midday because she was estranged, I'd say, from her community. And as she meets with Jesus, as she encounters him, um, her life is changed. And uh, she goes back to the community that she's estranged from and says, come and see the man who told me everything I ever knew. She becomes an apostle to them. And then we come to this long passage about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. And it's so explicit, the passage, isn't it? This is not someone who's passed away. Are they asleep? Oh, they're still warm to the touch. No, they are properly dead. They've been in the tomb for four days. The family are cried out. And I would say just disappointed when they meet Jesus. Why weren't you here? Why couldn't you make it? And the thing is, Lazarus' home in Bethany was as close as Jesus had to a mini break. I think he would spend time with that family. That was his place to relax away from the crowds in Jerusalem. This is actually a very personal miracle for Jesus. But if we backtrack to the beginning of the passage, does Jesus appear to be in a hurry? No. He knows what's happened to Lazarus and talks figuratively about Lazarus being asleep. And the disciples are always three trains behind, aren't they, in catching up. But Jesus is wanting to demonstrate the power of God. And there's this majestic quality about Jesus where in this sovereign way he's unhurried but he wants to make the journey. When he arrives, does he avoid the grieving sisters? He meets with them. He meets with their emotion and their grief. He deals with it squarely. Where were you? We needed you. It's too late. Have you ever had those moments with God? Where were you, God? It's too late. What happens next? Jesus wept. It's the shortest sentence in the Bible, isn't it? Jesus wept. The thing is, if you're inventing a God-man as a work of fiction, would you have the God-man weeping? It's a very human quality, isn't it? You just wouldn't put that in there as a detail. But Jesus was fully God and fully man. Jesus was engaged with the raw challenges of humanity. You may think, Jesus, why are you weeping? You're in charge, you can fix this. But Jesus identifies with our grief, our sickness, 
our suffering and our sadness and the God man weeps and it's only after he's weeped that he wipes the tears away and commands the stone to be rolled away I think we need to recognise that in having this picture portrait, can we have the next slide please, of Jesus who weeps at the suffering of humanity, we have a God who recognises the fragility of life, that yes, it is tough. Now, Lazarus will be raised, but ultimately, what will happen to Lazarus? He will die again. The power of the Easter message is that in Jesus' death and resurrection, that final barrier of death is broken. But the reality is, in this world... We're not there yet, are we? We're living in the now and the not yet. It's something to come. I wonder what you would think if you're a bystander at Lazarus's tomb, if you're in the crowd. Would you think that Jesus had met his match? I mean, turning water into wine, that's one thing feeding a crowd, that's another thing, a miraculous catcher, raising from someone from the dead after they've been dead four days, buried in a tomb, there's a stench? Surely not. But in faith, Jesus asks for the stone to be rolled away. And he commands Lazarus to come out. And at that point, the crowd are going, oh my goodness, this is getting really awkward. Jesus is just going to fall flat on his face. And then Lazarus appears at the threshold, pulling at his grave cloths. Jesus has called him back from death. It's a scandalous claim. It's a scandalous miracle that only shrinks down next to the Easter claim that Jesus rose again, that we hold so centrally as Easter people. There are miracles, and there are miracles. This can only be the work of the Son of God. And I don't know if you've heard me preach before, but when Jesus healed the man born blind, that was a de facto hallmark miracle of the Son of God, the Messiah. To raise someone from the dead was a de facto hallmark miracle of the Son of God, the Messiah. That's what was prophesied. That's what the Messiah was doing. That's what the Messiah is doing. Two miles from Jerusalem, just that Passover. What's going to happen? You either believe or you've got to get this guy out of the way. And the religious authorities were profoundly threatened by this. And the irritation for them is, Lazarus is walking around. The next slide. The Messiah miracle. This is um, a depiction of the raising of Lazarus by the artist Van Gogh. It's quite pale got Lazarus on the left and the Messiah is almost like this the raising of Lazarus what does it prefigure what Jesus himself will do the tragedy of death will be vanquished by Jesus resurrection the Easter miracle with holes in his hands, his feet and his side. It's one thing 
to predict that you're going to rise from the dead. It's another thing to do it yourself. If we believe this Easter claim, the world will never be the same again, before or since. The Easter account becoming that pivot point in history. Today's passage draws us towards the high dram drama of Easter with this astounding miracle. But Jesus is not operating like some remote executive calling through a bid to the auction room. Jesus is engaged in the raw emotion of life. The grief of Lazarus, his sisters, and his own emotions pour out. He's fully human, fully engaged. The one who has command over life and death, who knows how it will turn out, is still engaged there with us. The glory of Lazarus' risen and restored family life would bring a jolt in the Jesus movement that almost lights a, a fuse that, that runs all the way to Jerusalem, that riles the authorities into action. The glorious prefiguring of Jesus' Easter Sunday will trigger the events that lead to Good Friday. Do you see that? So where do we place ourselves in this picture just as we finish? Do we identify with the grieving sister? Or that emotion lashing out? It's too late, Lord. Too late. The bewildered spectator going, surely not. Surely, oh, oh. Almost wonder, dazzlement. What about one of the disciples feeling the cost, feeling the threat, knowing the weight? Or are you like Lazarus being called out of darkness into the light and the love of Jesus? Wherever you are, look to the man whose cheeks are wet with tears for the suffering world, yet also has the voice to command life from death and the spirit to rise beyond the tragedy of the cross. The raising of Lazarus was going to cost Jesus his life, but it also models the power and the hope of Easter. He pays the Easter price to gain the Easter hope. Amen. Living in the now and the not yet, I just wonder if now is a good time for us to light the candle and just say a prayer for the Ukraine conflict. So we continue to light this candle. Heavenly Father, we just pray, lifting up the conflict in Ukraine. We pray for peace. We pray for the day when the weapons of war will be laid down. Lord, in the account of Lazarus, we see the impossible becoming possible. And we pray for the impossible. Lord, that you turn the hearts of the warmongers in Russia. Lord, we pray for peace in Jesus' name. Amen. So we continue in worship.
let's pray for the world shall we come to our intercessions let us pray blessed are thou O Lord our God king of the universe Lord of all creation, in your hands are the corners of the earth and all that is in it. We worship you and thank you for your everlasting love, for your power and your glory are forever and forever. Amen. Lord, we come before you conscious of our own weaknesses and abilities, but trusting in the fact that you are the one who enables us to fulfill your will. You're the one who provides the power we thank you for the message we received from the raising of Lazarus Mary and Martha knew where to turn when they were in trouble they knew your love Sometimes, Father, we come before you. We know your love. Sometimes the prayers we pray don't seem to be answered in the way that we expect. But Jesus told us quite clearly it was for the glory of God within that situation that Lazarus had fallen asleep, or as we say, had died. Lord, in our helplessness, in our hopelessness sometimes, in our fears, in our doubts, come, show us that you are still the same God, the God who is the God who was, the God we read about, the God we've known down through the years, you are still the same, and you ever will be. And we praise you for that. And we trust you with ourselves, we trust you with what is yet to come. Father, we look to this world and all the problems, all the troubles, all the difficulties which we read about, which we see on our televisions. Riots, warfare, famine, pestilence. And we wonder, Father, sometimes where are you in this? But your word tells us that you are in it. You feel every heartache. You weep every tear. Father, we thank you that you're here. And it is you to you that we look as we hold before you all the needs which we are troubled with, the cares of the nations, the sufferings of the people, we bring them before you. And we ask you, Father, 
that you would step in in the power which was manifested in Jesus and through Jesus in the power of the resurrection come do something good Lord do something good and help us in seeing it to join in that goodness and spread it as far as we can. <coughs> Father, we are a people living in the now and the not yet. Oh, how easy it is to forget the not yet. Lift our eyes above, help us to see the glory as much as we can see of it, of the wonder of being in your presence, of joining with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven and singing your praises. To God be the glory. Help us to join in that glorious hallelujah chorus, singing your praise in your everlasting presence, in the eternal now of wonder, when all has been fulfilled, when death has been vanquished, no more sorrow, no more pain, just the wonder of your shalom. Father, we thank you for those we know those with whom we walked, with whom we worshipped, with whom we prayed, and who prayed with us and for us, we thank you for the memory, the fair memories of each and every one, both in days gone by and of recent days. We thank you, Father, for bringing them safely to yourself. Thank you that they're safe and secure beyond all pain and suffering because they are with you in your eternal glory. Father, in the name of Jesus, grant us the grace to walk the same paths with the same faithfulness and obedience as our friends and our dear ones did that we one day will be with them again, shining in your eternal love and goodness and singing your eternal praises. In the meantime, Father, for those who are still suffering, aches and pains every day, joints getting weaker, breath getting shorter, We ask you, Father, for those we know in sickness, in suffering, and in need, your peace, the healing of your presence, the sustaining of their energies as they continue their walk with you. And we pray for those whom you're bringing to yourself, that they may have the courage to walk the path that you walked, even through the valley of shadow, because they know that there's a table prepared. They know there's anointing. They know there's a cup filled and overflowing, and the goodness and mercy shall follow them all their days and they will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen.
Well, we're going to put this all into action and we start by sharing the peace. So would you please stand? In the upper room, Jesus came to his disciples and said, Peace be with you. And I think they were in shock. And he said it again, Peace be with you. And he breathed over them. And we share that same peace with one another. We're going to do it for real on Easter Day. Okay? We're going to do shaking of hands. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, you can do that Okay, on Easter Day. So up until that point, we're going to carry on. So the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. So we share peace with one another. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. Would you please be seated? In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. With your whole church, throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise um, and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. So let's follow the family prayer. Jesus uh, taught his disciples the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that we do what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be servants of others as you were the servant of all and gave up your life and died for us but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. Shall we join in the prayer of thanksgiving? Let's say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Who is firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all our children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we close with the blessing and then our final song. Um, just as we we're finishing, I just had a sense that the Lord might have given uh, a word to somebody or a picture. Um, anybody want to just share a word or a picture they feel the Holy Spirit's given them for the building up of the believers? Henry. So sometimes when we're out and about, you just have a sense. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. I wonder if we can receive that. We don't do church as a holy huddle. Henry's talking about when we're out and about, sensing the Holy Spirit being there, looking upon us. So as we go into the week, are we going to be looking out for those moments where the Holy Spirit is looking upon us, blessing us, resourcing us, sending God's love to us? Let's close with a blessing. The blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.